I was rummaging through the attic, dust motes swirling in the sunbeams slicing through the small window. It was one of those lazy Sunday afternoons when I had nothing better to do. My name is Harper, and I never expected to find something that would turn my world upside down. But there it was, tucked inside an old cigar box beneath a pile of yellowing newspapers. A letter aged and fragile, with my grandfather's handwriting on the front. I sat back on my heels, curiosity peaked. Grandpa had always been a bit of a mystery, a gentle soul with a twinkle in his eye. But he never talked much about his time at the helm of the family business. I unfolded the letter carefully, the paper crackling in protest. As I read, my heart began to race, a mix of disbelief and dread settling in my stomach. The letter hinted at something dark, something unethical happening within Callahan Pharmaceuticals. My grandfather had known, and he had tried to stop it, or at least, that's what the letter suggested. It was cryptic, as if he feared someone might find it. But the implications were clear enough to me. I sat there, the attic growing dimmer as the sun dipped lower in the sky, my mind racing. This could change everything. My father, Everett, had always been so proud of the company, his legacy. But what if that legacy was built on lies? I felt torn, my loyalty to my family clashing with the sense of justice that had driven me my whole life. I knew I had to do something, but what? I stood up, brushing the dust from my jeans, the letter clutched in my hand like a lifeline. My heart pounded as I made my way downstairs, each step heavy with the weight of what I had discovered. Dinner that night was a quiet affair, the clinking of cutlery and soft murmur of conversation filling the dining room. My mother, Lorraine, was in her element, talking about the latest charity gala she was organizing. My father sat at the head of the table, nodding along but clearly more interested in his phone. My brother Nolan was absent, as usual, off on some archaeological dig halfway across the world. I waited until there was a lull in the conversation before speaking up. I found something interesting in the attic today, I said, trying to keep my voice casual. Oh. My mother looked up, her interest peaked. What did you find, dear? Just some old letters from Grandpa, I replied, watching my father's reaction out of the corner of my eye. He paused, his fork halfway to his mouth, but said nothing. How lovely, my mother said with a dismissive smile, already turning her attention back to her salad. I pressed on, my heart pounding. Actually, one of them mentioned something about the company. Some kind of issue he was concerned about. My father finally looked up, his expression unreadable. Old news, Harper. Your grandfather worried about everything. He was a good man but he saw problems where there weren't any. There was something in his tone that made me uneasy, a flicker of something I couldn't quite place. I nodded, not wanting to push too hard. Not yet. But the seed of doubt had been planted, and I could tell it was going to grow. After dinner, I retreated to my room. The letter spread out on my bed. I needed to know more. I needed to understand what my grandfather had been trying to say. I pulled out my laptop, determined to dig deeper into the company's history, to find out if there was any truth to his concerns. As I started my research, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was on the brink of something much bigger than I had anticipated. My thoughts kept drifting back to my father, his dismissive tone, and the way he had avoided meeting my eyes. Was it possible he knew more than he was letting on? The more I thought about it, the more I realized that I couldn't let this go. I had to know the truth, even if it meant uncovering something that could tear my family apart. I glanced at the clock, realizing it was already past midnight. I closed my laptop, exhaustion pulling at me, but my mind was still racing. As I lay in bed, staring at the ceiling, I couldn't help but wonder what other secrets were hidden within the walls of my family's empire. And more importantly, what would I do when I finally uncovered them? The next morning, I found myself back in the dining room, staring at the remnants of breakfast. The tension from the previous night still lingered in the air, like a storm cloud refusing to move on. I could feel it in the way my father avoided eye contact, the way my mother busied herself with her phone, and the empty chair that usually belonged to Nolan. I decided to take the plunge. Dad, I started trying to sound as casual as possible about that letter from Grandpa. I was thinking maybe there's more to it. He looked up from his newspaper, his expression carefully neutral. Harper, it's not something you need to worry about. The company is in good hands. 
Is it though? I pressed, feeling a spark of defiance. I mean, if grandpa was worried, maybe we should be too. My mother's voice cut through, smooth and dismissive. Darling, your grandfather was a wonderful man, but he often saw shadows where there were none. We should focus on the present. I nodded, but my mind was already racing. I needed to talk to Nolan. He had always been the one to question things, to dig deeper. Maybe he knew something. Later that day, I called him. The phone pressed tightly to my ear as I paced my room. His voice crackled through the line, distant but familiar. Hey, Harper. What's up? I found something, I said, diving straight in. A letter from Grandpa. It mentioned some issues with the company. There was a pause, a breath of hesitation. Harper, I... I know about it. His admission hung in the air between us, heavy and unexpected. You knew, I asked, my voice a mix of surprise and hurt. Why didn't you say anything? It's complicated, Nolan replied, his tone weary. You know how dad is. And Clayton. He's been involved too. Clayton. Of course. Our cousin had always been ambitious, always vying for a bigger piece of the family pie. What do you mean? Look, I can't get into it over the phone. But there's more going on than you realize. Be careful, okay? I hung up, feeling more confused than ever. If Nolan was worried, then this was bigger than I thought. I needed to find out what Clayton was up to, how he fit into all of this. That evening, I cornered Clayton at a family gathering. He was standing by the bar, a drink in hand, charming as ever. Harper, he greeted me with a wide smile. Long time no see. Yeah, it's been a while, I replied trying to keep things light. I wanted to ask you about the company. I've heard some things. His smile faltered, just for a moment. Oh? What have you heard? Just some rumors, I said, watching him closely. About some questionable practices. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Clayton chuckled, but there was an edge to it. You know how people talk. Always looking for something scandalous. I nodded, pretending to accept his answer, but I could see the flicker of uncertainty in his eyes. He was hiding something, and I was determined to find out what. As the evening wore on, I kept an eye on Clayton. He was schmoozing with some of the board members, his charm on full display. But there was something else, a tension in his shoulders, a quick glance over his shoulder every now and then. He was nervous, and that only fueled my resolve. Back at home, I sat on my bed, the weight of the day pressing down on me. My family was hiding something, and I was caught in the middle of it. I thought about my patients, the people who trusted me to help them navigate their own challenges. How could I stand by and do nothing when my own family might be hurting others? I knew what I had to do. I needed to dig deeper to find the truth, no matter the cost. As I lay down, the room darkening around me, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was standing on the edge of a precipice, about to leap into the unknown. The next morning, I woke with a new determination. I needed to talk to Elias to get his perspective. He had always been my rock, my sounding board. As I dialed his number, I couldn't help but wonder what he would think of all this. Would he stand by me? Or would this be the thing that finally drove us apart? As the phone rang, my heart beat in time with it, each ring a reminder that I was on a path I couldn't turn back from. After my conversation with Elias, I felt a renewed sense of determination. He had listened patiently, his calm, steady presence grounding me as I poured out my fears and suspicions. His encouragement to confront my father had given me the push I needed. I knew it was time to face the truth, no matter how painful, I spent the next morning combing through the financial records I'd managed to dig up. The numbers were dizzying, a tangled web of transactions that seemed to hint at something more sinister beneath the surface. I took a deep breath, knowing I had to confront my father with what I'd found. That evening, I found him in his study, the room dimly lit by the glow of his desk lamp. He looked up as I entered, his expression unreadable. Harper, he greeted me, his voice a mix of curiosity and caution. Dad, we need to talk, I said, my voice steady despite the nerves twisting in my stomach. I laid the records on his desk, the paper rustling ominously in the quiet room. I found these. They don't look right. He glanced at the papers, his expression shifting from surprise to something harder, more guarded. Where did you get these? He asked, his tone sharp. Does it matter? 
I shot back, feeling a surge of defiance. What matters is what they show. There's something wrong, and you know it. He leaned back in his chair, a heavy sigh escaping him. For a moment, I saw a flicker of vulnerability, a crack in the facade. Harper, you don't understand. This is business. Sometimes you have to make tough decisions. Tough decisions? I echoed, incredulous. Grandpa wanted to stop this. He knew it was wrong. Your grandfather was an idealist, my father replied, his voice tinged with frustration. He didn't understand the pressures of running a company like this. I shook my head, disbelief coursing through me. You can't justify this, Dad. It's not right. He stood up, his posture commanding. This is my legacy, Harper. I built this company from the ground up. I won't let you ruin it with your naive ideals. I felt a flash of anger, the heat rising in my cheeks. Naive or honest? I can't just stand by and watch you destroy everything Grandpa stood for. He looked at me, a mix of anger and disappointment in his eyes. You need to decide where your loyalties lie, Harper. I turned and walked out, my heart pounding in my chest. I felt like I was being torn in two, my love for my family clashing with my need to do what was right. As I left the house, I realized I needed to clear my head to think about what to do next. I found myself wandering through the park, the crisp evening air cooling my heated skin. The conversation with my father replayed in my mind, each word a painful reminder of the rift between us. I felt a hand on my shoulder and turned to see Elias, his presence a balm to my frayed nerves. Hey, he said softly, his eyes full of understanding. Hey, I replied grateful for his support. I confronted him. It didn't go well. He nodded, a look of sympathy on his face. I figured it wouldn't. But you did the right thing, Harper. I don't know what to do now, I admitted, feeling the weight of my choices pressing down on me. Whatever you decide, I'm here, he said, his voice steady. You have to follow your heart, even if it's hard. We walked in silence for a while, the path winding through the trees. I knew I had a decision to make, one that could change everything. As we walked, Elias's phone buzzed with a message. He glanced at it, his expression shifting to one of surprise. What is it? I asked, curious. It's from Nolan, Elias replied, handing me the phone. He says he has something important to tell you. A new wave of uncertainty washed over me. What could Nolan know that was so urgent? I felt a flicker of hope, a sense that maybe, just maybe, there was a way to untangle this mess. As we made our way back, my mind was racing with possibilities. I knew I was on the brink of something big, a revelation that could change everything. But what would it mean for my family, for the legacy my father was so desperate to protect? The path ahead was uncertain, but I felt a spark of determination reignite within me. Whatever Nolan had to say, I was ready to face it head on, armed with the truth and the support of those I loved. The following day, I met Nolan at a small cafe, the kind of place where the hum of conversation and clatter of dishes provided a comforting backdrop to difficult talks. He was already seated at a corner table, his expression a mix of apprehension and determination. As I approached, he stood to greet me, pulling me into a quick hug. Thanks for coming, he said, his voice low. I know things have been complicated. That's one way to put it, I replied, taking a seat across from him. So, what is it you needed to tell me? He hesitated, glancing around as if to ensure we weren't overheard. I've been looking into the company, Harper. There's more going on than just financial discrepancies. The weight of his words settled over me like a heavy fog. What do you mean? Nolan leaned forward, his eyes serious. Clayton's been manipulating the numbers. He's involved in some kind of insider trading scheme. I think he's planning to take control of the company. I felt a chill run down my spine. Are you sure? I've seen the evidence, he said, sliding a folder across the table. It's all there. I didn't want to believe it either, but Clayton's been playing everyone. He's using the company's resources for his own gain. I opened the folder, the documents inside confirming Nolan's claims. My mind raced the implications spinning out in all directions. If this was true, it could destroy everything my father had built. And Clayton. I should have known he was up to something. What do we do? I asked, feeling the enormity of the situation pressing down on me. Nolan sighed, 
running a hand through his hair. We have to confront him, but we need to be careful. Clayton's not going to go down without a fight. I nodded, the resolve hardening within me. This was bigger than just our family. It was about justice, about stopping Clayton before he could do more damage. But I knew we had to tread carefully. Back at home, I found myself pacing the living room, the folder clutched in my hands. I needed to talk to Elias to figure out our next steps. As if on cue, he walked in, his expression shifting to concern as he saw my face. Harper, what's wrong, he asked, coming to stand beside me. It's Clayton, I began handing him the folder. He's been manipulating the company. Nolan found proof. Elias scanned the documents, his brow furrowing. This is serious. If we expose this, it could ruin him. Exactly, I said, feeling the weight of the decision before us. But if we don't, who knows what he'll do next? Elias nodded, his gaze steady. We have to do what's right, Harper, even if it's hard. I took a deep breath, grateful for his unwavering support. I know, but this could tear my family apart. We'll face it together, he assured me, his hand warm on my shoulder. That evening, I called a family meeting, my heart pounding as I waited for everyone to gather. My father was first to arrive, his expression wary. My mother followed, her usual poise tinged with curiosity. Nolan was last, his presence a silent show of support. Once we were all seated, I took a deep breath, the words heavy on my tongue. I have something to tell you. It's about Clayton. My father's gaze sharpened, his posture tense. What about him? I slid the folder across the table, watching as he opened it, his expression shifting from confusion to anger. These are serious accusations, Harper. They're not accusations, I replied, my voice steady. They're facts. Clayton's been using the company for his own gain. My mother gasped, her hand flying to her mouth. Everett, is this true? He looked up, his face a mask of disbelief. I don't know, but if it is, we can't let it continue. The room was silent, the weight of the revelation settling over us like a thick fog. My father looked at me, his eyes filled with a mix of anger and betrayal. What do you want to do? I met his gaze, feeling the strength of my convictions. We need to confront Clayton. We can't let him destroy everything Grandpa worked for. There was a pause, the tension in the room palpable. Then slowly, my father nodded, a reluctant acceptance in his eyes. You're right. We need to stop him. As the meeting ended, I felt a sense of resolution, a new determination to see this through. But I knew the hardest part was yet to come. Confronting Clayton would be a battle, one that could change everything. But with Elias and Nolan by my side, I felt ready to face whatever came next. The next morning, I woke with a sense of dread curling in my stomach. Today was the day we would confront Clayton. I could feel the tension in the air as I got ready, each movement heavy with anticipation. Elias was already up, his calm presence a reassuring anchor in the storm of my thoughts. Are you ready for this? He asked, handing me a cup of coffee. As ready as I'll ever be, I replied, trying to muster a smile. We need to stop him before things get worse. We met Nolan outside the office building the morning sun casting long shadows on the pavement. He looked as tense as I felt, but there was a determination in his eyes that mirrored my own. Together, we walked through the glass doors, the sound of our footsteps echoing in the lobby. Clayton was in his office, a sleek, modern space that seemed to reflect his ambition. He looked up as we entered, surprise flickering across his face before he masked it with a smile. Harper, Nolan, what brings you here? I took a deep breath, stepping forward. We know what you've been doing, Clayton. The insider trading, the manipulation. It's over. He leaned back in his chair, the smile never leaving his face. I have no idea what you're talking about. Nolan placed the folder on Clayton's desk, the documents spilling out like a damning cascade. It's all there. You can't deny it. Clayton's eyes flicked over the papers, his expression darkening. You think you can just walk in here and accuse me of this? You're playing a dangerous game. I'm not the one playing games. I shot back, my voice steady despite the adrenaline coursing through me. This isn't about us. It's about doing what's right. He stood, his demeanor shifting from casual to threatening in an instant. You have no idea what you're getting into. This company is mine, 
and I won't let anyone take it from me. The room was thick with tension, the air crackling with unspoken threats. I could feel my heart pounding, my resolve hardening with each beat. We're not backing down, Clayton. Not this time. For a moment, I thought he might lash out, but then he laughed a cold, humorless sound. You think you're so righteous, Harper, but you're just like the rest of us, clinging to a legacy that doesn't belong to you. His words hit me like a blow, the truth of them stinging more than I cared to admit. But I couldn't let him see that. I couldn't let him win. This isn't about the legacy. It's about justice. Nolan stepped forward, his voice calm but firm. We're giving you a chance to step down quietly. If you don't, we'll have to take this public. Clayton's eyes narrowed, the mask slipping to reveal the anger beneath. You think you're the heroes in this story? You're just pawns in a game you don't understand. I met his gaze, refusing to back down. Maybe. But at least we're trying to change the rules. The silence that followed was heavy, the weight of our confrontation hanging in the air like a storm cloud. Finally, Clayton nodded, a reluctant acceptance in his eyes. Fine. You want to fight? You've got one. As we left his office, I felt a mix of relief and apprehension. We had taken the first step, but I knew the battle was far from over. Clayton wouldn't go down without a fight, and the stakes were higher than ever. Back at home, I found myself pacing the living room, my mind racing with possibilities. I knew we had done the right thing, but the fear of what might come next gnawed at me. Elias watched me, his calm presence a balm to my frayed nerves. You okay? He asked, his voice gentle. I don't know, I admitted, stopping to face him. I thought I knew what I was doing, but now, everything feels so uncertain. He nodded, understanding in his eyes. It's okay to be scared, Harper, but you're not alone in this. I took a deep breath, trying to steady myself. I just hope we're doing the right thing. We are, he assured me, taking my hand. And whatever happens, We'll face it together. As the day wore on, I felt a new determination settling over me. This was about more than just my family. It was about standing up for what was right, even when it was hard. I knew the road ahead would be tough, but with Elias and Nolan by my side, I felt ready to face whatever came next. The family gathering was supposed to be a celebration, a momentary pause in the storm that had engulfed us. But as I stood among the familiar faces, the weight of what I had to do pressed down on me like a physical force. The room buzzed with laughter and clinking glasses, but all I could hear was the pounding of my own heart. I spotted my father across the room, his presence a commanding force as he held court among a circle of board members. My mother was nearby, her laughter ringing out like a melody in the chaos. I took a deep breath, steeling myself for what was to come. Elias squeezed my hand, his silent support grounding me. I nodded, a wordless exchange that conveyed everything I couldn't say aloud. It was time. I approached my father, each step feeling like a mile. He looked up as I neared, his smile faltering as he read the determination in my eyes. Harper, he greeted me, his tone cautious. Enjoying the party? We need to talk, I said, keeping my voice low. He nodded, excusing himself from the group and leading me to a quieter corner. What's this about? I took a deep breath the words heavy on my tongue. It's about Clayton. We confronted him. His expression darkened, a mix of anger and disbelief. You did what? He's been using the company for his own gain, Dad. We have proof, I said, my voice steady despite the fear nodding in my stomach. He shook his head, a bitter laugh escaping him. You're making a mistake, Harper. You don't understand what you're doing. I understand enough, I replied, feeling the heat of my convictions. This isn't about us. It's about what's right. He leaned in, his voice low and dangerous. And you think you're the one to decide that? You're just a child playing at being a hero. His words stung, but I refused to back down. I'm trying to fix what's broken, Dad. This company isn't what it used to be. He straightened, a cold fury in his eyes. You're just like your grandfather, always seeing problems where there are none. Maybe he was right. I shot back, the words spilling out before I could stop them. Maybe you're the one who's blind. The silence that followed was deafening, the tension between us a living thing. I could see the hurt in his eyes, a vulnerability I hadn't expected. But it was gone in an instant, replaced by a steely resolve. 
You're making a choice, Harper, he said, his voice cold. And you'll have to live with the consequences. I felt a chill run through me, the finality of his words sinking in. I know, but I can't stand by and do nothing. He turned away, dismissing me with a wave of his hand. Then you're no daughter of mine. The words hit me like a physical blow, the air rushing from my lungs. I stood there, frozen, as he walked away, his back a wall I couldn't breach. I felt Elias's presence beside me, his arms slipping around my shoulders, pulling me back into the present. Harper, he murmured, his voice a lifeline. We'll get through this. I nodded, the motion automatic. But inside I felt hollow, like a part of me had been carved out and discarded. My father's words echoed in my mind, a reminder of the cost of my choices. As the evening wore on, I found myself retreating to the edges of the gathering, the noise and laughter a distant hum. I felt adrift, the ground beneath me shifting with each passing moment. Nolan found me there, his expression a mirror of my own turmoil. I'm sorry, Harper, he said, his voice thick with regret. I didn't think it would come to this. It's not your fault, I replied, though the words felt empty. We did what we had to do. He nodded, a silent agreement that did little to ease the ache in my chest. We'll figure it out. Together. As the night drew to a close, I felt a new determination settle over me. I had lost my father's support, but I still had Elias and Nolan, and I still had the truth. It would have to be enough. But as we left the party, a new complication arose. A call from the office, urgent and insistent, pulling me back into the fray. Clayton had made his move, a last-ditch effort to seize control and silence us once and for all. The stakes had never been higher, and the path ahead was fraught with danger. But I knew I had to see this through, to fight for what was right, no matter the cost. The news from the office hit like a punch to the gut. Clayton had called an emergency board meeting, a last-ditch effort to consolidate his power and silence us for good. I felt the urgency in every fiber of my being as we rushed to the company headquarters, Elias and Nolan at my side, a united front against the storm. The boardroom was already buzzing with tension when we arrived, the air thick with anticipation and unspoken alliances. Clayton stood at the head of the table, exuding confidence, his eyes gleaming with the arrogance of someone who believed victory was within reach. Ah, uh, Harper, he said, his voice smooth and condescending. I was wondering when you'd show up. I met his gaze, refusing to be intimidated. This ends today, Clayton. He laughed, a sharp, mocking sound. You think you can just waltz in here and take what's mine? You're delusional. The board members shifted uncomfortably, their eyes darting between us, sensing the battle lines being drawn. I felt the weight of their scrutiny, but I couldn't back down now. We have evidence, I said, my voice steady. Evidence of your insider trading, your manipulation of the company's finances. It's over. Clayton's smile faltered, a flicker of uncertainty crossing his face before he masked it with bravado. You're bluffing. You have nothing. Nolan stepped forward, placing a thick file on the table. We have everything. And if you don't step down, we'll take it public. The room fell silent, the tension so thick it was almost suffocating. Clayton's eyes narrowed, a dangerous glint in them. You think you're the saviors of this company? You're just trying to destroy everything we've built. We're trying to save it, I countered, feeling the truth of my words resonate within me. This isn't about revenge, Clayton. It's about justice. He sneered, his composure slipping. Justice? You think you're some kind of hero? You're just a spoiled brat trying to play with the big boys. The word stung, but I held my ground, drawing strength from Elias and Nolan beside me. I'm not playing, Clayton. This is real. And it's time you face the consequences. The board members exchanged glances, the tide of opinion shifting as they weighed the evidence before them. I could see the doubt creeping into their eyes, the realization that Clayton's reign might be over. But then, in a move I hadn't anticipated, Clayton pulled out a document of his own, slamming it onto the table with a triumphant grin. You think you've won? Think again. This is a contract, signed by your father, giving me control of the majority shares. My heart sank, the revelation hitting like a cold wave. I glanced at Nolan, his expression mirroring my shock. This was the twist we hadn't foreseen, the final card up Clayton's sleeve. 
The room erupted into chaos, voices overlapping as the board members reacted to Clayton's revelation. I felt the ground slipping away, the certainty I'd clung to crumbling beneath me. But just as despair threatened to take hold, Elias stepped forward, his voice cutting through the noise. That contract is void. All eyes turned to him, the room falling silent once more. Clayton's smirk faltered, confusion flashing across his face. What are you talking about? Elias held up another document, his expression calm and resolute. This is a legal opinion, confirming that the contract is invalid due to conflict of interest and lack of disclosure. Clayton's face paled, the confidence draining from him as he realized his trump card had been played and lost. I felt a surge of hope, the tide turning once more in our favor. The board members murmured among themselves, the balance of power shifting as they reconsidered their loyalties. Clayton's grip on the company was slipping, and he knew it. You haven't won, he spat, desperation lacing his words. This isn't over. I met his gaze, feeling the strength of my convictions. It is over, Clayton. It's time for you to step down. The room held its breath, the weight of the moment pressing down on us all. Clayton's shoulders sagged, the fight leaving him as he realized the inevitability of his defeat. As he turned and left the room, the tension began to dissipate, replaced by a sense of relief and vindication. We had faced the storm and emerged victorious, the truth prevailing against the odds. In that moment, I felt the themes of justice and integrity come full circle, the lessons of my journey crystallizing into a new understanding. This wasn't just about revenge or family. It was about doing what was right, no matter the cost. And as I stood there, surrounded by those who had stood by me, I knew we had done just that. In the weeks following the showdown at the boardroom, life began to settle into a new rhythm. Clayton's departure had left a void in the company but it also opened up opportunities for change and healing. The board had appointed a new interim CEO, someone with integrity who was committed to rebuilding trust and transparency. Elias and I threw ourselves into the startup, channeling our energy into creating something meaningful and innovative. It was exhilarating to see our ideas take shape, to build a company grounded in the values we both held dear. Our partnership, both personal and professional, felt stronger than ever. One afternoon, I found myself back at my grandfather's house, sorting through the last of his belongings. The attic was warm with the afternoon sun, and I felt a sense of peace as I sifted through the memories. As I opened an old trunk, I discovered a stack of letters tied with a faded ribbon, each one addressed to me. Curious, I sat down and began to read. The letters were filled with my grandfather's musings, his hopes for the family, and his deep love for us all. One line stood out to me, Harper, always remember that true strength lies in kindness and the courage to stand for what is right. The words resonated deeply, a reminder of the journey I had taken and the lessons I had learned. I felt a renewed sense of purpose, a commitment to honor his legacy in my own way. Later that day, Elias and I met Nolan for coffee. The cafe was bustling, the air filled with the aroma of fresh pastries and the hum of conversation. Nolan looked more at ease than I had seen him in a long time, the weight of secrecy lifted from his shoulders. I've been thinking, Nolan said, stirring his coffee thoughtfully. Maybe it's time I came back for a while. Help out with the company, see if I can make a difference. I smiled, feeling a warmth spread through me. I think that's a great idea. You've always had a way of seeing things others miss. He nodded, a hint of a smile playing at his lips and maybe I can finally figure out what I want. Outside of Dad's shadow, Elias raised his cup in a toast. To new beginnings. We clinked our cups together, the sound a small celebration of hope and renewal. As we left the cafe, my phone buzzed with a message from my mother. It was a simple note, asking if we could meet. I hesitated, the old wounds still tender, but Elias squeezed my hand, offering silent encouragement. When I arrived at the park where we had agreed to meet, Lorraine was already there, looking elegant and composed. As I approached, she turned, a soft smile on her face. Harper, she said, her voice gentle. Thank you for coming. Of course, I replied, unsure of what to expect. She gestured to a bench, and we sat down, the silence between us comfortable yet charged with unspoken words. Finally, she spoke, her voice tinged with regret. 
I've been thinking a lot about everything that's happened, about the choices we've made. I nodded, letting her continue. I want you to know that I'm proud of you, she said, her eyes meeting mine, for standing up for what you believe in. It's not easy, but you did it. The words were a balm to my soul, a healing I hadn't realized I needed. Thank you, Mom. That means a lot. We sat in silence for a moment, the weight of past conflicts slowly lifting. It wasn't a complete reconciliation, but it was a start, a chance for healing and understanding. As I walked back home, I felt a sense of closure, a peace that had eluded me for so long. The journey had been difficult, filled with challenges and heartbreak, but it had also been transformative. I had found my voice, my strength, and a path that was uniquely mine. The future was uncertain, but I knew I was ready to face it, armed with the lessons of the past and the support of those I loved. And as I looked ahead, I realized that true success wasn't about wealth or power, but about integrity, love, and the courage to do what is right. In that moment, I understood that my grandfather's legacy lived on, not just in the company, but in the values he had instilled in me. And I was determined to carry them forward, building a future that honored the past while embracing the possibilities of tomorrow.